Inference for population means, T procedures and one-way ANOVA testing. The one sample T. Using this procedure, we can run a significance test and create a competence interval for a single population mean. It requires that we have a random sample of quantitative data. For example, test the assumption that the population mean age is 40 years. Our sample data would be ages. The one sample t-test assumes a normal distribution and outlier screening is important. So to run the one sample t-test for the population mean age, we need the unit 3 Excel tool. Variable 6 is our sample of cardholder ages. The one sample t-test will be run with variable number 6. So our t-test results will be shown here, but to formulate our null hypothesis we'll need to supply a test value for mu. Here the null hypothesis is that mu equals 40 years of age. And here are our results. So our sample mean is significantly less than 40 and the result is quite strong. Our confidence interval shows at 95 percent confidence the population mean age is somewhere in the range 33.34 to 37.8. Compared to 40, the entire range is below that test value of 40 years. So stating our results formally, we would say here that we strongly reject the null hypothesis that mu equals 40. The degrees of freedom for a one sample t are simply n minus 1. So t for 76 degrees of freedom is a very strong 3.96 which is highly significant. Comparing our confidence interval to the test value of 40 we could see that our interval range is somewhere from 6.66 to 2.22 years less than 40 and we obtain that simply by taking the confidence limits and subtracting 40 from each. The T procedures assume a normal distribution and these sample data were checked for normality and screened for outliers. And in this case, the T test is valid. The match samples T. This technique reduces to a one sample T because although we're considering two measures of the same thing, these two measures are matched to one individual such as in a before and after test. The data are always quantitative, so we're computing differences between the two measures, and those differences become our one sample of data. For example, test to see if the amount charged on a credit card has changed from month to month. We would need two measures of monthly spending and we would compute the difference as measure 1 minus measure 2. The match samples t-test assumes typically zero difference as a test value. Like all t-procedures, it assumes a normal distribution, and we can check our sample differences to validate that assumption. So to run the match samples t-test, to see if there's been a significant change in the amount charged from month to month, we need to have two measures of amount charged. Variable 10 is named previous amount. It's the amount charged from a previous month. Variable 3 is our current amount charged. We're going to run the matched samples t-test, computing differences as the current amount, variable 3, minus 
the previous amount, variable 10. So our results are here. The differences calculated produce a sample mean difference of $20 and about 50 cents. Using that test value for population mean difference, or mu d, of zero, we get a very weak t statistic, clearly statistically insignificant. And the p-values reflect that. At 95% confidence, we can see that the range of the interval is from a negative difference to a positive difference. So zero is in that range, and it is clearly in that range. So it's like saying we're 95% confident that there's been no change in the amount charged from month to month. So this test produced no statistically significant results. We would simply indicate that in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis that mu d equals zero. Our 95% confidence interval supports this. It ranges from negative to positive and clearly includes the value zero. So we can conclude that the mean difference in amount charged from month to month is quite possibly a value close to zero. The two sample t. This technique uses a independent variable that's categorical and typically has two categories. Our dependent variable is quantitative. So we're creating two groups of the dependent variable, grouping those quantitative data by category of independent variable. The two sample t-test typically assumes no effect of the IV on the DV. In other words, HO is that both population means are equal. For example, what is the effect of gender on amount charged? Gender has two categories, so we're going to group the amounts into two samples, one for men and one for women. We compute the sample mean difference and test it for significance by comparing it to a test value of zero difference. Like all T procedures, the two sample T assumes normality. But here we have two independent populations, men and women, and both would need to be checked. Before running this two sample t test, let's check the required assumptions of normal distributions and screen for outliers. Using a unit one Excel tool, our quantitative variable here is the amount charged. and our categorical variable is gender. The worksheet tab grouping allows us to specify a category such as M and examine the distribution of amount charged just for the men. So we see some moderate skew in our sample of n equals 34 men, but no outliers. Changing the category to f, we see an approximately normal distribution and again no outliers. So this two sample t-test we would say meets the required assumptions of normal distributions. Now we are ready to actually run this two sample t-test. Our independent variable is variable number four, gender. So we would input variable number four and the category labels, F and M. Our dependent variable is the amount charged, variable number three. The worksheet tab 2t test shows us the sample information for the 43 women 
and the 34 men. The difference in the sample means is positive, so the women spent $668.64 on average more than the men. 4283.93 minus 3615.29. The null hypothesis assumes equal means. So we're simply testing 668.64 against a test value of zero difference. The strong T stat is clearly significant. Our 95% confidence interval estimates that the women spend on average $254.85 up to $1,082.43 more than the men. So in stating our statistical results formally and making a conclusion, we would say that in this case we strongly reject the null hypothesis of zero mean difference. And our evidence for that is that T for 61 degrees of freedom is a strong 3.231, which is highly significant. We conclude, therefore, that the women spend more on average than the men. Our degrees of freedom of 61 in this case is obtained by our software and uses what's called the Satterthwaite approximation. Our 95% confidence interval is an estimate of the population mean difference. Here we can see that the women spend on average somewhere between $254.85 up to $1,082.43 more than the men. The one-way ANOVA. ANOVA testing gives us a more powerful way to compare group means. While the two-sample T only compares two groups, the ANOVA test can compare more than two. It also assumes equal means, in other words, no effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. The F test for ANOVA gives a general result in terms of the null hypothesis, but it's the post hoc analysis that shows us the specific effects by comparing the group means. ANOVA assumes normality and equal variances. We check that assumption of equal variation by using the standard deviations of our sample data, and we employ the two times rule. For example, what effect, if any, does household size category have on amount charged? Household size is a quantitative variable, but to use it as an independent variable for ANOVA testing, we have recoded it into categories. Household sizes of one or two are labeled category one, three or four, group two, and household sizes over four are group three. Before running this ANOVA test, let's check the required assumptions and screen for any outliers. Our quantitative variable here is still variable number three, the amount charged. But our categorical variable here is a categorical version or a recoded version of household size which is variable number two. On the worksheet tab grouping, we could check the distributions of each category. So category one of household size shows us an approximately normal distribution and we're free of any outliers. Checking category two of household size the amounts for category two have some moderate skew to the right, but again, we're free of any outliers. And then finally, category three of household size, the amounts charged follow a normal distribution approximately and are free of any outliers. Now let's check the standard deviations. We're using the two times rule. 
So if the largest standard deviation is no more than twice as large as the smallest, we can say we meet the required assumption of equal variation. So category three has a standard deviation of about $628. Category two is certainly not one half that size. Category one, just a little bit larger, but certainly not twice as large. So we could see by comparing the standard deviations that they're all about the same, and we can meet that required assumption of equal variation. Now that we've met the required assumptions for ANOVA testing, let's run the test. Our independent variable is our recoded version of household size, which is variable number eight. And we have three categories of household size, and they're labeled one, two, and three. Our dependent variable is the amount charged, variable number three. So Excel is creating three groups of amount charged by category of household size. Our ANOVA test results here show a highly significant effect. F for 274 degrees of freedom equals a very strong 48.16 and our p-value reflects that. But the F-test result shows only the general effect. In other words, we know that there's some difference in the group means and it's statistically significant. But we need the post hoc analysis to determine the specific effects. The confidence interval for category one of household size is in this range, which is clearly lower than the range for category two. We're looking here for any common range, and these two intervals have none. However, looking at category three, we can see there is some common range between categories two and three. The confidence intervals overlap. So our final conclusion here would be that there is a significant difference in the means. We get that from our p-value. The specific effect of household category is that category one spends significantly less than categories two and three. However, we can also conclude that there's no significant difference in average spending between categories two and three. So in stating our results formally, we could say that we strongly reject the null hypothesis of equal means. Household size does have an effect on spending. Our evidence F for two comma 74 degrees of freedom equals 48.16, which is highly significant. Our post hoc analysis shows the specific effects of household size category on average spending. And from that we learn that categories two and three do not differ significantly. However, category one is significantly less than both categories two and three. So in practical terms, what we see here is that small household sizes, category one, which was defined as a household size of either one or two, spend significantly less on average than household sizes of at least three. This concludes the program Inference for Population Means, T-Procedures and One-Way ANOVA Testing.